So, so far we have talked about how to multiply exponents with the same base and divide exponents with the same base. Just a little bit of a review. When we multiply exponents with the same base, we add the exponents. When we divide, we subtract those exponents. If you don't know how to do that, go back and watch lessons one and two. Today we're talking about taking powers of powers. So that will look something like five to the fourth raised to the fifth power. This is a power of a power. So if we had three to the fourth raised to the fifth, this time we're taking our exponents and we will multiply four times five because we are multiplying four copies of three five times. So that would be three times to the four times five, which would give me three to the 20th power, okay? So example one, I said we would raise a power to a power and that means we multiply. So seven is my base, it remains the same take my exponents and I multiply them. Two times six is 12. I leave my base of seven. One more example. I'm raising one and three tenths to the third power. I'm raising all of that to the tenth power. So I would have one and three tenths raised to the three times 10, which would give me one and three tenths to the 30th power. Okay. We said in earlier lessons one and two that it doesn't matter whether you use letters or numbers, the same rule applies. So if I have a variable of X, that I've already raised to the M power, and I wanna raise that to the N, you still would multiply your exponents together. And if you don't remember, when letters are stuck together like that, that implies that you're being, they're being multiplied. So another example, so you can see kind of how this works. If I had A raised to the B power, and I was raising all of that to the C power. I would multiply my exponents, B and C, and keep my base of A. So this would be A to the B times C. So you can pause here and do exercises one through four and then hit play when you are finished. So 15 is my base. Raise the power. I'm raising all of that to the ninth power. Keep my base of 15 to the three times nine, and I would end up with 15 to the 27th power. Exercise two, my base is negative two. Remember from lessons one and two, you need to keep parentheses around negative numbers. Multiply my exponents. My answer would be negative two to the 40th power. Exercise three, my base is three and four tenths. My exponents are 17 and four. 
I will multiply those since I'm raising a power to a power. 17 times 4 is 68. So my final answer is 3 and 4 tenths to the 68th power. And you've done all your multiplying in exercise 3. You have the same exponents in exercise 4. We're just using a variable S instead of a number. So you keep your variable S, raise 17 to the fourth, 17 times four, as we just found out, is 68. So your answer would be S to the 68th power. Exercise five says that Sarah wrote three to the fifth raised to the seventh power is three to the 12th. Correct her mistake and then write it correctly. You write an exponential equation using a base of three and exponents of five and seven and 12 that would make her answer correct. So this would be raising a power to a power. And we said earlier, power to a power, we multiply. Well, where do we add our exponents? Because in order to get seven, and 5 to equal 12, you have to add them. So if you'll remember that we multiply exponents with the same base, we add. So that would look something like 3 to the 5th times 3 to the 7th. That would give you 3 to the 12th. And even though this doesn't ask us, let's talk about what this actually would be. So 3 to the 5th raised to the seventh. If I'm raising a power to a power, I multiply those. So my base of three, I multiply my exponents and that would give me three to the 35th power. We're actually going to skip number six, so you don't have to do that one. Okay, now let's put more than one number or variable inside the parentheses. Just because this X does not have a letter or a number next to it, doesn't mean that it doesn't have one. We talked last week in lessons one and two about how if it does not have one, we know that the exponent is one because there's one X and there's one Y. So you've actually taken X and multiplied one times N times Y to the first times N. You have to distribute that distributed property where everybody gets something. Everything has to be multiplied by that exponent of N. So again, let's use letters A, B, and C so that you can see this in action, okay? If I I have A and B inside my parentheses, and I'm raising everything to the C power. You still distribute your exponent of C to everything inside your parentheses. So you would have a base of A to the one times C. There's one A, one B, times B to the one times C, giving you A to the C power, times b to the c power. If you want to put the multiplication sign in between, you can, you do not have to. Either way would be correct. So let me go through some of these exercises with you so that you'll see how this works. Now we're using numbers. So I still distribute my exponent of nine to everything inside the parentheses. I have 111 and one four. So this would be 11 to the one times nine times four to the one times nine. One times nine is nine. So your simplified answer worked all the way out would be 11 to the ninth times four to the ninth. And we cannot put those together because they're not the same base. 
we have a base of 11 and a base of four. If they were both 11, then we could join those together. If they were both four, we could, but they are not. Okay, exercise eight, there's already an exponent in here. So we're not multiplying by one like we did in seven. So you still distribute your exponent of five, but this time you start out with something other than one. So three to the two times five times seven to the four times five. Now you just multiply out your exponents. Three to the 10th times seven to the 20th. All right, exercise nine you should be able to do, so I will skip that one so you can practice with it and go back and go over it in just a moment. I wanna talk about number 10. 10 confuses some people because you have that letter and people just want to put 5x to the seventh. But what we have forgotten is we have to distribute the seven to everything inside the parentheses. So my five also has to be raised to the seventh. Since there's nothing beside it, both of those, we have one five, one seven, their exponent is one. So one times seven, times x to the one times seven, gives me what I just wrote up there, five to the seventh times x to the seventh. All right, pause here and I want you to do nine, 11, and 12. Come back and check your answers when you're finished. Exercise nine, you've distributed your five, to both of the exponents inside the parentheses. So you have a base of three. You already have an exponent of two, but now you distribute the five. So you have two times five times a, already being raised to the fourth. Now we're gonna raise that four to the fifth. Next step, multiply your exponents. Three to the 10th, two times five is 10 a to the 20th. Okay, exercise 11. Right now, five is being raised to the first because there's one five. X is being raised to the first because there's one X. Y is being raised to the second. So I need to distribute the seven to every one of those exponents to the exponent of two and to the exponents of one. So one times seven is seven, your base is still five. One times seven is seven, your base is still X. Two times seven is 14, your base is still Y. Giving you a final answer of five to the seventh times X to the seventh times Y to the 14th. Be careful with 12 because all of these have exponents. B has an exponent even though there's one not written. There's one B, so my exponent is one. I have A to the second being raised to the fourth, so I multiply that by four. Times B to the first raised to the fourth. Times C to the third raised to the fourth. So I end up with A to the eighth times B to the fourth, times C to the 12th. The only thing left to show you is that even if you have something written in fraction form being raised to an exponent, you still have to distribute to everything inside the parentheses. So both your numerator and your denominator. So X, we only have one X. So that has an exponent of one. We're gonna multiply that times in. Y, there's one Y, so an exponent of one multiplied by N. Will give us X to the nth power over Y to the nth power. 
Another example, we'll use A, B, and C again, like we did earlier. If I had A over B raised to the C power. Remember to use parentheses because this is a fraction. So I'm distributing my C to my numerator and my denominator. So I'll have A to the first times C over B to the first times C would give me a final answer of A to the C divided by um, B to the C because a fraction means you're dividing. Or you could say A to the C power over B to the C power. All right, we cannot assume that Y is zero. It cannot be zero. Remember that you cannot have a denominator of zero. So that's why you will see in all of these problems that Y cannot equal zero. That's what that means. You can have a numerator of zero, but you cannot have a denominator of zero. Okay. If you need to go back and watch this again, now is the time that you can do that. Have a great day.